and her conscience would be soothed by feeling that she had done what she could, he gave way, especially after I had told him the five-pound note adventure, and he had scolded me well for allowing it. I then alluded to my idea that she might add to her small income by selling tea, and to my surprise, for I had nearly given up the plan, my father grasped at it with all the energy of a tradesman. I think he reckoned his chickens before they were hatched, for he immediately ran up the profits of the sales that she could effect in Cranford to more than twenty pounds a year. The small dining parlor was to be converted into a shop. Without any of its degrading characteristics, a table was to be the counter. One window was to be retained unaltered, and the other changed into a glass door. I evidently rose in his estimation for having made this bright suggestion. I only hoped we should not both fall in Miss Maddie's. But she was patient and content with all our arrangements. She knew, she said, that we should do the best we could for her, and she only hoped, only stipulated, that she should pay every farthing that she could be saved to owe for her father's sake, who had been so respected in Cranford. My father and I had agreed to say as little as possible about the bank, indeed never to mention it again, if it could be helped. Some of the plans were evidently a little perplexing to her, but she had seen me sufficiently snubbed in the morning for want of comprehension to venture on too many inquiries now, and all passed over well with a hope on her part that no one would be hurried into marriage on her account. When we came to the proposal that she should sell tea, I could see it was rather a shock to her not on account of any personal loss of gentility involved, but only because she distrusted her own powers of action in a new line of life and would timidly have preferred a little more privation to any exertion for which she feared she was unfitted. However, when she saw my father was bent upon it, she sighed and said she would try, and if she did not do well, of course she might give it up. One good thing about it was she did not think men ever bought tea, and it was of men particularly she was afraid. They had such sharp, loud ways with them, and did up accounts, and counted their change so quickly. Now, if she might only sell comfits to children, she was sure she could please them. 